that you may become aware of it, but you also may be able to go out into the world and let people experience the gold mine that the Lord created you to be. Thank you very much for joining us. Today our topic is mentorship. Mentorship, a, very, a topic that is very um, close to my heart. And I'm glad that um, we are joined not only by one, but uh, some of my mentors. And I'm very sure that the Lord will minister to us as, as we move forward. Um, our guest today is Leverett John Wesley Guo, who is uh, not only a friend, but also a mentor uh, who we have worked with, um, not for a very long time, but during that short time, he has really made a difference in my life. Um, Leverett John Wesley has been a pastor, a senior pastor with the CITAM um, here in Kenya. Um, he's, he's, he's currently on a break. He is actually in the U.S. as, as we speak, so we shall be ministered to from uh, a distance. And I want to believe that the Lord uh, will bless us. I met Leverett Wesley most probably in the 90s when I was in high school through KSCF. Maybe I've never told him that. And thereafter, um, in, high school, uh, in, in campus in, at Kenyatta University, where he would come frequently to minister. And the place where we connected well was at Africa International University. It was then uh, uh, next. Uh, that's where I was a student. And uh, I think he was also there, uh, either starting his doctorate, he had finished his master's. And um, we connected. We connected at a time when I was going through some turbulence in my ministry. We connected that time, then had a break then recently connected at the time when I was in my halftime. I just hit uh, 40, was not very sure what was ahead uh, for me, and was seeking. I think when I talked about uh, personal life audit, I talked about relationships and getting people who can challenge you. And one of the people that uh, God led me to is uh, Reverend John Wesley. And we started a journey that we are still on, very fruitful. I can say so far, it has been very good. And therefore, I know tonight, things are going to be different. I think I won't, um, I, can, I can talk until tomorrow about Leverett John Wesley, um, but he, I would also want him to say a few things about him. I'm also grateful for my longtime mentor and one of our guests who was here a few weeks ago, Leverett Peter Wangombe, who have worked with me for almost 20 years. So when mentorship is being spoken here, uh, there are people who are here. So I'll ask um, Leverett Wesley um, to, just go ahead and say a few things about himself. Sometimes I find it very good when people say things about themselves, and then we'll be able to proceed with our topic for the day. Welcome, Leverett Wesley. You are muted. Um, I need to unmute. Uh... Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, thank you very much for that uh, introduction. Uh, Definitely, I think I'm very shy to introduce myself. So thank God you have done a good job. So I don't have to, <laughs> maybe the only thing I can say is that um, uh, I am married uh, to one wife and I have three children and one uh, glad son. And um, I also would want to say that uh, I am very pleased to have you um, invite me to come and share on mentoring or mentorship. Uh, incidentally, you you among the many people that I've mentored become like the crown of joy. Whenever I see you doing well um, and others, and I've actually realized that uh, God has called us not just to things or to money, but actually to people business, development of people. And uh, what we are sharing about today on mentoring is one of the one of the key uh, one of the keys to developing people to become what God made them to become. I traveled to the U.S. in March, and um, I was locked down here. But uh, thank God for technology. I, 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 I am, I'm feeling like uh, I'm not exactly locked down, but released now to get into the world through this, this kind of means of Zoom and uh, through the social media and, other, uh, and otherwise. Otherwise, I'm so glad to be here this morning. This morning here and elsewhere, <laughs> different time zones. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Leverett Wesley. As, as we move on, I'll also be sharing some, some, something that we are doing with Leverett Wesley and some other friends. And therefore, if you are a young adult or you are a young professional below 40 years, uh, tune in, stay to the edge. You'll be able to know uh, some of the things that um, uh, we are doing um, to ensure that each and every one of us gets to fulfill the 
desire, the, the desire that God has for, uh, for us. So today we are talking about mentorship and um, Reverend Wesley says that um, he is a pace setter, he is a catalyst, and for sure he is, he has catalyzed me. And therefore, as we talk about um, uh, mentorship, we shall be using the five fact-finding questions by Edmund Chan, um, Reverend Edmund Chan, uh, which are, why is, if you are asking about a topic or a subject, why is it important? And if it is important, then why is it neglected? Then we will ask ourselves about what is it all about? What is uh, mentorship or mentoring all about? And what, what makes it hard to achieve? So as we continue with this conversation, we'll be trying to answer those questions. And finally, we'll ask ourselves, how can mentoring be done best? We would want you to be part of the conversation and we would want you to work together with us. And therefore, if you have any question, feel free to write it on our chat um, here on Zoom. Uh, for those who are watching us on Facebook Live, I will be checking. Also, feel free to uh, put down that, that, that question on um, our, our, our Facebook Live uh, video, and we'll be able to handle those questions as we progress. So feel free. Uh, you can also, there is also, through this technology, there's a way you can raise your hand. Feel free to raise your hand, and I will see it, um, and I'll be able to... Um, allow you to speak and ask that question that you have because we would want it uh, to be participatory, but more important to be as relevant as it can be uh, to each and every one of us. So we would want, not want to leave anyone uh, behind. So we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll request uh, Reverend Wesley to just get in there and tell us why mentorship is so important. Thank you very much. Um, if we had the whole time, maybe this week and next week, and next week, but one will just be handling that, why it is so important, because I have not, I have actually studied, I've looked at our Lord Jesus Christ, I've looked at even the philosophers, I've looked at uh, great organizations, and how they, and what has made them to, you know, continue from generation to generation, and I've realized actually it is mentorship uh, that causes that to happen, mentoring causes that to happen, and before we even come to make the definition of it, there are five, five key things that will cause mentoring uh, to be so important. And the first one is, mentor, through mentoring, we transfer discipline and specific knowledge. You find that uh, head knowledge alone uh, may not be able to get people. There are too many people who know things. But when, like for instance, I'm working with uh, Bernard, We'll talk about the, the, the issues that we have to talk about, but of course in the, ment in the mentoring, uh, I have to hold him accountable. And if it is a discipline that we have talked about, I hold him accountable that he is doing it. And uh, the transfer of the discipline takes place. So the transfer of disciplines and specific knowledge takes place best through mentoring. And then secondly, the best enabler of life skills development. You know, we would want to develop skills um, we'll be mentioning something like uh, what, what, we, what we call entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship or actually uh, not even entrepreneurship for the best part of it, but even apprenticeship itself. You realize that skills can only be uh, handed over from one person to another uh, through an interaction between one person and the other person. And that is where mentoring becomes so important. The third thing is when you are trying to path a career or to be counseled into a career, you need somebody to walk alongside of you. And so career pathing and counseling also takes place when mentoring is being done in an effective way. And so it is so important that if you want to get into a career, to develop into a career and, you know, to go through it uh, with, with great counsel, then mentoring uh, becomes very key. Then development of acumen, you know, where you, you, you are getting more knowledge and you're becoming an expert, and even the soft skills of being able to uh, do the same. Uh, you realize there are people who uh, can do things, but they are not able to become like the gurus of being able to, to, uh, to get the same out. And then finally, um, in every career, in every place, whether it is in family, whether it is in career, whether it is workplace, whether it is in business, there's what we call the insider knowledge. Those keys you normally hear about, um, about an institution or organization or a group structure, the norms, the culture, the professional networks, those can only come through mentorship. 
actually sometimes they are not even released through the classroom the classroom you just hear many things but when you get mentorship that inside the knowledge uh, like some of the things that we know about uh, about uh, one another with Bernard. Oh my goodness! I think if we became enemies, we would really, really finish one another because you know we have some inside information about one another. But at the same time, we share secrets. I would call them secrets of life that can only be shared at the mentoring level. So I'm mentioning I've mentioned those five things, um, and uh, again I will just go through them very fast. The transfer of disciplines and specific knowledge. Is the best available of life skills development, career pathing and counseling, development of acumen and soft skills, and dissemination of insider knowledge about an institution, or organization, or group structure, norms, culture, and even professional networks. That takes place through mentoring. And actually, if we were to go to, um, there's a chart I would want um, Banan to show us there. Why mentor? This one is developed by the American Productivity and Quality Center. And uh, in this chart, they, I believe there will be a way that maybe we can be able to share it, uh, where maybe we share every quarter, every, I mean, we can, we can expand it and we show every quarter of it. Um, you realize when it comes to the transfer of discipline and knowledge, you, you decrease time to, co to competency. You, the time taken be, 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 uh, between when you are an intern to when you are competent, that time is decreased. I mean, it's decreased when mentoring is taking place. And then, of course, you're able to fill knowledge and skill gaps uh, that people have come, you know, with a master's or a PhD, but then uh, you realize in practice there are things that need to be filled. And then you retain at risk knowledge. You know, that knowledge that is needed. Uh, by the individual uh, to be able to operate. By the way, we all operate, you know, at risk, but you are able to retain that knowledge. And then the second quarter on the on the right, you realize we have the career pathing and counseling again. Uh, the the AP um, AP Q AP Q what <laughs> is American productivity and a quality center, APQC. Um, you, they say again, mentoring helps retain the right employees in the right roles. When you are mentoring, you, you're able to do that. Then you're able to support career decision making and then boost employee satisfaction and engagement. The employees become more and more satisfied in their operations when somebody is working alongside with them and their engagement becomes boosted. Then the quarter on the bottom right is the uh, development of business acumen and staff skills. Again, that takes place uh, because mentoring helps build soft skills for leadership and communication, how to handle people. Uh, you, can, you can be firm, but soft. You can, be, you can, you, you can drive people and they, they are feeling you are handling them like human beings. Improve employee interactions and, and teamwork. Again, mentoring will help in that and encourage critical thinking. When you are with somebody who you trust, you can help um, critical thing to take, to take place because people feel safe with you when you are, you are doing critical thinking. And then finally, the bottom left um, is there. And uh, you realize uh, in that case, you, you are able to communicate the bigger picture in dissemination of insider knowledge, the bigger picture, you're able to look at the bigger picture without just looking at the task at hand, then instill organizational norms and culture where you come and say, this is where we have come from, this is what we are doing. If it is a family situation, you say, this is who we are, these are our norms, this is our culture, and then jumpstart professional network building where you are able to connect the mentee with the people that you operate with. So that, in, in short, is what we uh, would say uh, for now is why mentorship is so, so important, Bernard. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Reverend Wesley. And like I said, for those who are just joining us, uh, feel free to ask any questions that you have, um, either through our chat or, or you can comment on the right video on Facebook. We will be able to address those questions. We don't want to leave anyone behind. 
we want all of you to work together with us. The second question that Leverage Deadmod uh, Chan asked um, in terms of fact fighting when you're looking at a discipline is then if such a discipline or such a, a relationship is so important, then why is it neglected? Why is mentoring neglected, uh, Leverage? Uh, well, I think most of the things that are neglected in life is basically because of ignorance. Actually, ignorance is the main thing. When people don't know the need and the benefits of something. Because people don't know the need uh, for mentorship and they don't know the benefits, then definitely they will uh, neglect it. But there are some people who even know the need and benefits, but mentoring requires commitment. From both the, the one who is mentoring and the one who is being mentored in terms of time, in terms of energy, in terms of even finances, maybe you're traveling from one place to the other, and you realize um, because of the, 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 you know, the demands of it. Um, but thankfully, you realize there are so many people actually who, um, who would want to be mentored, but there are very few role models and mentors that are available. Uh, you realize uh, some of us, when we say I'm available for mentorship, you get so many people coming around and saying, can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Because there are very few people who either are role models or actually willing to do the mentorship. So those, those three things are key. And number one, again, ignorance of the need and benefits. It requires commitment in terms of time, energy, and even finances for all the, the two, the mentee and the, the one who is being mentored. And it is an, avera is an availability of role models and mentors causes uh, the mentoring to be so neglected, although it is so important. Bernard. Thank you very much. Uh, we've really said a lot, but I think we have to pause and ask ourselves then, what, 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 is, what is mentorship all about? Uh, what, is all, what is it all about, Leverage Blessing? Well, I think um, the, the name mentor originates from uh, Homer's Odyssey. He, he wrote, he wrote uh, you know, Odyssey, and he named a character there, uh, mentor. And the word mentor actually means someone who teaches or gives help and advice to a less experienced. And often, a younger person, um, according to the Greek, um, you know, ancient Greek language. And uh, I, I just want to say that is where the, the, the name comes from. But the concept is not from Homer. The concept is not from Homer. The concept is actually has been there since creation. And uh, <clears throat> after looking at several definitions, I finally settled on just saying that, <clears throat> because some of, some of the people think it is a very formal thing. Other Others think it is very informal or very non-formal. Um, I, I would say that mentoring is a formal or informal, one-to-one -one relationship or small group interaction. And we add there, it is possible to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Like, and when we look at somebody like uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, he also had a small group of 12. The interaction between less experienced individuals, these are the ones we call mentees or protegees and a more experienced person. That is what we call the mentor, which typically aims to advance the specific or holistic growth of the mentee. You are looking at a mentee, a person who wants to grow and you want to advance either a specific skill or the holistic growth of the person. And uh, that is what mentoring uh, becomes all about. Again, I will say the definition that we would be using here is the formal or informal one-to-one -one relationship or small group interaction between less experienced individual, that is the mentee or a protege, and a more experienced person who is the mentor. More experienced, it could be mature or even younger, but more experienced person, which typically aims to advance the specific or holistic growth of the mentee. Now, I will say that the Bible says something about mentorship, uh, looking at it from a Christian viewpoint. And as seen from the definition where we are talking about a wise and transcendent counselor or teacher, the term mentoring itself doesn't appear in the Bible, but scripture does give us numerous examples of mentoring. And uh, uh, of course, we know about Moses, who was mentored by his father-in-law, Jethro, first as a son-in-law, 
how to handle his family, but also as a leader in Exodus 18. Then Joshua and Moses, Esther and by uh, her cousin Mordecai, Elisha by Elijah, the disciples by our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul by uh, Barnabas, and then Timothy by Paul who has been mentored by Balpas, and that one continues. So we find that there are people who walked alongside others. Now, some people will call it discipleship, others will call it uh, apprenticeship, but it is the same concept where one is being mentored, one is being grown, and uh, you know, to become what they are expecting to become by another one. And uh, you find that there are synonyms of mentorship, uh, mentoring, synonyms that was, you talk about the same. Now, uh, in a lot of literature, you find that we will we'll, we'll say that mentorship is not exactly equivalent to all these terms, but in mentorship, all these terms are used. For instance, uh, in apprenticeship, of course, this is where you are learning a trade. Um, there is mentorship there. When we are talking about coaching, there is mentorship taking place there, uh, counseling, in guidance, in shepherdhood, uh, in teaching and discipleship. You find all those terms. Whenever we talk about all those terms, effective apprenticeship, effective coaching, effective counseling, effective guidance, effective shepherdhood, like past, being a pastor to someone, effective teaching or effective discipleship, for it to be effective, then it requires there to be a form of mentorship, transfer of knowledge and skills to another person. Thank you, Bernard. And, and maybe, maybe I, I could quickly mention and say, um, when we're talking about mentorship, there's a lot of misunderstanding of what mentorship is. I've had people bearing on other people, uh, calling them, forcing them to a relationship, and then they start doing appraisal, performance appraisal to the person. Uh, you, you start feeling like you've become an employee of the, men, of the mentor, or you, know, you bring healing or therapy, you, you become paternalistic, you know, um, somebody has to address you as a father or you know, um, a title, you know, so that at least you know, there, there's, a, there's a relationship where you, there, there's paternalistic kind of behavior. Uh, you find people being punished and uh, disciplined and uh, being assessed uh, for a third party. I, I think all that is not what mentorship is about. Mentorship, like what uh, Dr. Wangombe mentioned, is about relationship. If you remove relationship from mentorship, then you have, you have lost it. It's a relationship between two, but one with more knowledge and the other one. Ben. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I, I hope that we are moving together. And like I said, if you have a question, just write it down as a comment on the Facebook live video or um, just put it as a chat on our Zoom and I'll be able to get that. We won't walk with you. Don't be left behind. If you have any concern, just raise it up and we'll be able to address that. Reverend Wesley, if then mentorship is all these that you have said, then what, what, what makes it so difficult? What makes it so difficult? I think um, <clears throat> the, the gentleman you mentioned called Ed Bunchan, Reverend Ed Bunchan, uh, in his book, Radical Discipleship, uses sometimes, sometimes on why discipleship is so difficult. And I've actually realized when I looked at it, uh, the same thing applies to mentorship. Um, and especially if you, are, if you are Christian and you want to grow to, the, to be who God called you to become, who God made, uh, you know, the, the, the purpose for which you are created. And uh, there are several things he mentioned in the, what makes discipleship to be so difficult. And I will actually apply them to mentorship here. And I will say, the first thing is the spirit of the age. We have the spirit of the age of consumerism. Consumerism is where we only think about profit in life. We think about money, we think about uh, material wealth. And therefore, if, when we have such kind of an attitude, we will not either take time as a mentor to mentor somebody else, or you will not take time to be mentored yourself because you are thinking about what do I benefit from this? Uh, how much money am I getting? Uh, who is, you know, uh, how will it benefit, uh, benefit me? How, I mean, at the end of the day, how much do I get from it? 
And uh, then the struggle of our age is canality, where there's more of the of the the pride of life, the 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 the, the last of the flesh, and the last of the eyes. Uh, again, connected with consumerism is where we just want to fulfill the 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 passionate uh, the passions, you know, the passions of uh, of life. And you realize that that is not the right environment for mentorship to take place. Then there's the stress of the age. Uh, where it is combativeness, they must do things. And uh, I have fallen into this, by the, by the way, I, I had to go through a, a burnout and I regret that uh, um, at that point is when I realized a mentor could have helped me to just not to be combative, to just do things that are coming on our way. Uh, the combativeness of this must be done and must be done by me. And if it is not done, you know, the world will collapse, which is a fallacy. And then the superficiality of our age, where we conform to any trends that are taking place, where we are always conforming to what is happening around us. And uh, Ed Chan goes on to say that we have commitment without surrender. You know, there's, we don't want to surrender our lives. And uh, again, this one comes basically to believers, where for effective mentorship to take place, you must first and foremost surrender to the Lord but also surrender to the person that is leading you. There is what we call devotion, we are setowa, where we spend time you know, with somebody, but you, you are having that devotion before discipline. And when there's no discipline, things will crack on the way and mentorship becomes very difficult. Like if you're not disciplined on matters to do with time and the usage of your, of your, you know, of your uh, abilities, uh, usage of your money and everything else. If discipline does not come in, you, you realize that uh, uh, as much as you're devoted to something, it will not work on the wrong run. But then finally, there's what we call effort without empowerment. Again, we realize that there are so many people who are given demands to do, but they're not given the tools. They're not given the empowerment to be able to, uh, to uh, do what they're supposed to be, uh, what is supposed to be done. And mentorship helps actually in the empowerment part. And uh, once the empowerment takes place, then the effort that we put in anything uh, we realize will be a lot of uh, fruit. So mentorship becomes so difficult because of the spirit of the age, because of the struggle of our age, because of the stress of our age, because of the superficiality of our age. And uh, those three things about commitment without surrender, devotion before discipline, and effort without empowerment. I know those are big, big words, but I think it's good for uh, the uh, viewers and the listeners to go and uh, do something to do with the decoding of the same. Yeah, we shall, we shall chew. We shall chew these words until they are edible and uh, make sense to us. But I, but I want to believe that we are able to understand what um, Reverend Wesley is saying. He's a mentor. He's speaking from a, a point of... Um, understanding and a point of experience and I'm one of his mentees so um, you might start gauging um, um, how, how, how good he is in this field and he has many many other mentees I may be one who came just the other day. Leverett Wesley how can mentorship be best accomplished? Well I think this is a, a very important question and uh, I would say there are several things that um, will cause mentorship to be best accomplished and, and let me say that uh, we don't have to become so mechanical about it. But one key thing that is important in mentorship is intentionality. Intentionality on both the mentee and the mentor. You are intentional. Like a mentee who says, I want to grow and I am committed to grow and I will grow. And so I am intentional that I want to grow. And the mentor wants, you know, the person that they have like Bernard, Bernard, I really want to commend you because as much as I am your mentor, you have a, 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 so many people that you are committed. You are very intentional. You know, uh, you have small groups, including this one, but others to do with marriage, the, the youth and uh, professionals, because you are intentional. That's why you even created this webinar. You are intentional. That intentionality is very important. But then uh, for mentorship to be best accomplished, uh, is there, there needs also to be clear terms of engagement. You know, you, you just get to know, like uh, when we were doing it, 
uh, with Bernard, we had to say, uh, what, what are we committing ourselves to? What is needed? What are the time commitments? Uh, how will we be doing it? And uh, what is the expectation? Now, if there are no expectations, uh, then you realize that we may go and then along the, uh, alongside the way, uh, the expectations either of the mentor or the mentees are not met and they need to be reviewed again and again so that at least you are able to go uh, with clear terms of engagement. Then uh, mentorship again, it, it takes place best at one-on-one, -on -one, as you mentioned in the definition, all when it is in a small group. Small group, one-on-one -on -one is important. Now, the approach, if it is formal, that's good. If it is formal, it is good. Mentorship will take place in a formal setting, but it takes even uh, place better in an informal setting where there's a natural and familiar setting. Like for instance, in the family, in the workplace, in the school, in the neighborhood, in one's career or sphere of influence, there you realize it becomes very easy for uh, the, the, the mentorship to take place because you're interacting with the person in their natural setting. Um, if it is a pastor to a pastor, it's the same career, you're talking the same language, you know, uh, if it's a politician to a politician. But then, of course, if it's a, it's a parent to the, 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 the child, you find that mentorship takes place very effectively there. But of course, mentorship also takes place when you, you are dealing with specific skills, with a specific mentor. And that's why Bernard can say he has several uh, mentors because you are looking at different issues. Uh, you may be wanting to develop in your ministry. You may be wanting to develop in your family. Of course, if you can find one uh, fitting all, it's okay. But if you can't, there's still that element of, if it is finance, like for instance, if he wants to be mentored in matters to do with auditing, I'm not the person, definitely. I not claim to be the person. I will ask questions, but I am not experienced in that. So he has to go and look at somebody or for a mentor who is able to do that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, there's also the training for effectiveness. There's the training of mentors. And uh, as Bernard mentioned, we, we have uh, an initiative where we are looking at um, mentorship of young adults and young professionals. And you'll be mentioning that as we come, uh, we come to a close later. And so there's training where you empower people to be able to do it because it's, it's not obvious that it will take place. Although it, mentorship takes place in, in every setting, but it can be better accomplished when there's training. And then also preparation of mentees. Mentees come, like I said, with different uh, expectations. But when you prepare a mentee, that this is what mentorship is all about, this is the process, this is what is expected of you, then definitely uh, it is best accomplished that way. Then, of course, it is usually best when the older or experienced mentor um, is there and you know is mentoring a younger or inexperienced person that is the best setting you know especially if uh, there's a respect kind of uh, you know there's a, a, a relationship of respect uh, of the person who is being mentored because either you feel you're more inexperienced or you are younger and you're looking up to the other person uh, that is older or maturer or more experienced but let me quickly mention that there are people who are old at 60 or 70, they are more childish than those who are 40 or 30. So age is not just the only thing we are talking about here, but maybe more of experience or maturity. And uh, finally, I would say that a mentoring relationship is best accomplished when there are the following things by the mentor. Now, I, I, I don't want to get deep into this, but a mentor, whoever is mentoring, should be empathetic in listening skillful in questioning to explore where the person is. They should be willing to share the experience and uh, you become more authentic when you share your own experiences, whether they are experiences of failure or success. There is mutual learning. You realize uh, there's no, no one who is not subject to learning. Even if you're more experienced, you, you learn. Then develop insight through reflection. And by the way, in mutual learning, again, there's what we can call commentorship, you know, you are, you are you're mentoring, but you're also being mentored. And then you develop insight uh, through reflection. You, take, you have some, uh, some 
uh, reflection moments that are given for you to be able to reflect on what you're going through. Then encouraging independent thought. You don't impose ideas. Uh, you encourage decisions and actions that are independent. You become like a catalyst. Now, let me talk about my, <laughs> my being a catalyst. I don't come to run a mentee's life, but I come to, uh, if I could use a, 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 um, a Kiswahili term, Koroga, you know, you just come to, you know, ensure that the person just gets to think and then they make their own decisions. And then, of course, there is uh, the element of championing, um, you know, where you, you, you become a cheer, you know, you cheer the person, coaching and guiding. Now, all those uh, will promote effective mentoring. But I would want to say, it is better you do mentorship without all those skills than not doing it at all because you don't have them. You begin somewhere, if you are experienced that you are, you are a person of integrity, you can be joined to somebody and just share life experience the way you, you find it and you find yourself more effective in your mentorship. Over to you, Bernard. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, you've, you've, you've said, the things you've said really look like this has to be intentional. So. I'm wondering, um, I've had people, you know, I see this preacher on TV or this um, person who is good in public speaking. And because I listen to them on TV, I listen to them on radio, I read the articles, I watch them on YouTube. I say, this is my mentor. While that person has no idea I even exist, would that be called a mentorship relationship or does it have to be intentional from both the mentee and the mentor? Well, I think um, the, it's, it's very, I will make a statement here that will shock you. We, you can be mentored if you are intentional. You can be mentored by somebody who is even dead. Um, you can be mentored, like I know, I personally have been mentored um, by somebody called Mordecai and Barnabas, and they are not alive according to the reports that, you know, I mean, the records. But I've taken time to study them. I have been intentional to find out what made Mordecai to succeed. What made, and even though they are dead, they speak to me. And so it is possible for some form of mentorship to take place because you are following somebody like Billy Graham, uh, the late Billy Graham, but you are reading him and you are studying what he did. Some of the, the things that has found so many people to, to, to grow are uh, like biographies or autobiographies. Biographies or autobiographies of people that you admire, people you may never be able to get a chance uh, to get close to. And you can actually be mentored by them because you are seriously uh, looking at their lives, understanding what made them to take. But the most effective one is when it is one-on-one. -on -one. If it is possible for you to be able to get the person himself or herself and work with them, they are able now to see you, you know, like where they are able now to notice your gaps because we, we, we can be very self-deceptive. We can be very self-deceptive about, um, and the Bible talks about the heart of man being desperately wicked. We can, we can think we are doing very well until somebody walks alongside of you and tells you, hey, I think that is not working well. So, yes, we can be mentored by somebody who is far through their books, through their videos, through what is written about them. But effectiveness in mentorship takes place when the other person is able to look at you, question you, listen to you, find gaps, and help you to develop the skills as you relate. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, David is asking, what is the difference between mentoring and coaching? Is there a difference or are these the same thing? Uh, well, I think when it comes to that's why I said that in mentorship, you, you look at the, the whole life. You look at the whole life. You, you want the person to develop holistically. And even if it is in one skill, you want them to have the other skill. In coaching, sometimes you just want to develop a particular skill. And you may not even relate with the person. You may not relate with the person very closely. You just meet for, like for instance, a football coach. It's not required that you, you have... Uh, you know, side, side meetings, although for effectiveness, some of them decide to become mentors. Um, I have followed football quite much and I've realized some of the coaches that we know, and the managers, um, will end up 
choosing some of the players and they become their mentors because they are interested about the holistic development of the person. But in coaching, uh, if you are an athletic coach, you just come and you are developing the running skills or the passing on skills in football. And uh, so the coaching is, there's a specific uh, skill that you are, you are looking at, which may not be related to the entire life of the person and you're developing it. It is, I would almost want to say that coaching is, an, is a subset of mentorship. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for that answer. Remember, you can always, you can ask your questions on the uh, Zoom chat. You can also ask your questions on Facebook. And um, Jogona Jane Nogari on Facebook is asking, is there a certain number of mentees recommended for a particular person? How long should you mentor someone? So those are two questions. Well, um, one of them is you, you cannot effectively mentor um, too many people. And uh, it depends on your own capacity. Some people can only mentor one person. Uh, you, you remember the Lord Jesus Christ said that somebody was given one, another one was given two, another one was given five. Uh, so you may find that you can only effectively, because again, there's what we call the, the, the time commitment, the energy commitment. You may find that you can only be able to take one. You can be able to take two. You can actually be able to take five. You can go with 12. And when it is a small group, of course, the small group can help you now to be able to do the mentorship um, with the delegated issues because they can now be able to counter check with one another. They can be able to uh, confront each other. They can be able to uh, be uh, accountable to one another. And therefore, you can actually very easily be able to, like if you're a pastor, you can be able to mentor your elders. And at the same time, you're, you're mentoring a group of, uh, those who are heads of departments in, in, in the various ministries, and then they are able to do the same with others. And occasionally you can meet with the, the other groups that they are mentoring because they also look up to you, but they are looking up to you because you are doing it through somebody else. But uh, definitely a very large group of people, you will find yourself not being effective. They, will, they can call you their mentor because of what I mentioned earlier, because they look at you, they look at your life, they, want to copy you, you are their role model, they find out the secrets, they can come and question you how you do things, but effectively you are able to only uh, mentor those people, you have enough time, energy, and uh, you know, be able to have trust enough to be able to walk alongside. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as, as, as you've been talking, you've been saying that um, when people meet together, they, they talk about many things, and it's true. Uh, you and Reverend Wangombe know, know a lot about me. Uh, can one, if they find that they're not getting what they expected from a mentorship relationship, exit or, or, or cease to continue with it? Um, or if like confidentiality is breached, and how can one do that without... Um, making it uh, acrimonious. Uh, thank you. Uh, sorry, I forgot part of the question of uh, how long, and it's coming up again. A mentorship can be for a lifetime. A mentorship can be for a lifetime, but of course, ensuring that uh, you are not, you're not becoming um, somebody who is over-dependent on the other. If it is not a dependence kind of relationship, you keep on looking up, because like if somebody is older than you, you always find uh, you are making decisions at five years of ministry when that person has 30 years of ministry. When you have 10, you are at 35. When they are, you are 20, they are at 50. So they still have something to give to you. And so you, if you walk alongside of them, you cannot say, but you can terminate a mentorship relationship. Um, either because you are not able, you have become too busy or you have been separated and you're not able, of course, now, uh, with, with the kind of technological advancement, you may not be separated forever, but you could be separated because of um, movements of work or uh, because of various other things. Uh, and so, especially now, if you lose trust on the person or the person starts becoming paternalistic or controlling, you actually are free to terminate. And even if it's a religious uh, folk who wants to, ca to cast you, if you find somebody wanting to cast you, they were never mentor in the first place. They, they were using you for their own purposes. If 
you separate from me, then you never succeed. You know, you never find another mentor. That's somebody who can curse you is not somebody worth of your time and journey as you walk alongside in life. Yeah, so the second part of my question was, this someone I respect. They could be my pastor. They could be someone senior. How do I exit um, without having issues? I think we need to, to say at the beginning, um, you needed to have had uh, discussions about the terms of engagement and uh, how in the eventuality of that happening, how you'll be able to, to part. And um, there are skills that are needed in what we call conflict management. You don't quit at the first, uh, the first place when an, uh, a conflict arises, definitely, or not even the second time. But you can get to a point where you actually realize you are either uh, not benefiting anything and you are able to tell the person exactly why that is not possible. If, for instance, somebody is sexually uh, misusing you, you can say because of this kind of relationship that is happening, I, I am I'm not comfortable to be able to continue. And so that's it. All I realize that you have become quite busy and I'm not benefiting. Um, but don't remain in a mentorship relationship with somebody just for the sake of it or pleasing the person. Find ways. And uh, when we are doing the preparation for mentees, like we'll be doing on a long-term basis of mentors, even a mentor, you don't have to be forced to be a mentor of somebody who is just using your name, maybe just mentioning, uh, floating your name around, you know, so-and-so is my mentor, but they are not leaving it. Uh, and so there has to be an understanding that it has to be a mutual, let me use the word, mutual agreement of going on together. And courteously, honestly, lovingly, it can be brought to an end uh, without being acrimonious about it, but if there's anything to do with the injury to the person or threats, uh, you don't have to be very kind when your life is at stake. Thank you, thank you very much. I can see um, Reverend Evans Wawero is asking, and as we go to it, towards the finish, what are the key qualities to look out for when identifying a mentor that can caution a mentee for lose, from losing direction or abuse? I think uh, that, again, uh, if uh, you join us, we'll be able, in, in our mentorship training, we'll be able to deal with that, especially when we are looking at uh, mentoring younger people. But quickly, I would want to say the things that I mentioned at last. Um, before you make a commitment, there must be that element of, is the person listening to me? Do they understand me? Uh, how, how, how are, they, are they empathetic with my situation? Um, are, they, are they able to explore and get what I'm going through? Do they, are they willing to be authentic and share their own experiences? Um, you know, are they, do they encourage independent thought or decisions? So you don't just jump into a relationship. You start meeting with the person to find out whether these people are willing to give guidance to you and whether you trust them, uh, whether they are people of integrity before you make a commitment. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Charity, that uh, if there is a conflict which is related to confidentiality issues, yeah, we agree that uh, you should yeah. be able to quit. The last, the last question as we bring this to a close, um, is, is this so important that I must have it or can I just decide I don't need mentorship I can do it alone. Uh, I can walk this journey. Or must everyone really have a mentor? Um, I didn't wonder how you survive for, for the long run without a mentor. Um, it is not something to be forced into, but it is so important that it is very highly recommended. <laughs> very highly recommended uh, because uh, God has put people who have known more knowledge than you and people who can be able to, like uh, what, in the first session we were talking about self-audit. The best audit is having somebody else also to look at you and tell you, yeah, 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 yeah. As much as you think you are very effective in this, you are not um, because of ABCD. And therefore, um, 
if you think you can make it, yeah, you, you move along, but it is very highly recommended that you may get into trouble because uh, you, 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 may, you may go upsided in life when you could have been able to be more sober in the way you do it. At some point in my life, I, I did not have some mentors and I made some mistakes that I don't want to make again in life. Wow, wow, thank you very much. Did you say you just made some mistakes? You know, you see some people up there and you're wondering, Reverend John Wesley, the one we know, made some mistakes. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think you know. You, I think you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's very important to, to be mentored. So this is the last question. I can see questions are coming in, but we have to bring it to a close at some point. This one is asking, Tabitha Gishuru is asking, can I be mentored or mentor someone of the opposite gender? Not very highly recommended not recommended yes it is possible especially in, in the family setting it is possible it is possible and i think i mentioned intentionally i mentioned esther and mordecai and uh, in the professional workplace again you realize that as long as you are meeting in, uh, in 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 ways that are open i think it could happen that you are mentored by the person that is working on a particular, like maybe you're in accounts that you're mentored to become a better accountant or something like that. But checking uh, on the the lines, <clears throat> you know, you you the social distancing. Let me talk about social distancing now. You know, the social distancing. Are you operating at the intimacy level or are you operating at the professional level? If you are checking on that, but definitely it is recommended very highly that uh, one gender kind of, uh, you know, mentorship is the best. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Um, we just have about five minutes to go. So I request you to make some final remarks in about three or so minutes, and then I will uh, um, say what I had to say, and then we'll bring it to a close. So what are your final remarks? Um, I, would have, I would have decided, is a, is a, Dr. Lee still there, Peterson. I would have yes. wanted Peterson. To, Peterson, I would have wanted Peterson to say something if he could. He could. I know he has been listening. He's a silent listener to this conversation. Uh, if he could say, I could donate my my one minute or two minutes to to, to my friend, Dr. Angombe. Please say something. Unmute, please. Unmute. Uh, yeah, Wesley, you, you've been very comprehensive and very thorough. So I was just enjoying, uh, I was supposed to go for another meeting, but I have been hooked here. <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate what you have said and I support it fully. Um, I don't have much to add here, actually. I've just been taking notes and, and nodding my head and agreeing. And uh, I, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, opening yourself up to, to this kind of relationship with Banat is a great guy. Um, and uh, for, for those of you listening to Wesley, uh, we, we've known each other from a uh, uh, long time ago in university. Uh, and so here you have one person uh, who has a lot of wealth uh, of experience in different things. So I just want to say thank you, uh, Pastor John. Thank you very much. I would also want to uh, donate one more minute to somebody called uh, Josephine uh, Gu. That's my wife. I know her identity, a photo may be, you know, a video may be not there, but she can say something. Uh, just something. Please unmute if you are there and say something. Josephine, are you there? I can see you are muted. Maybe she she may not be there. Let me see this. If if you hear let me, me let me are, try to unmute. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's yeah, she's good now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I had I had put some controls. So, um, Reverend Josephine, please <laughs> go ahead. What do you have to say, sweetheart? How are you? Good evening. Here, mm. this is the evening. It's actually eight. Uh, going to a half past eight. Like yes. I know that uh, John Wesley, you are not in the night. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I was just watching you from the warmth of our couch at uh, the living room. You've done <laughs> an excellent job in, in mentoring. I know that is your heart 
uh, that's your passion and uh, I believe it is part of the uh, these two ones, your destiny, your purpose, which God definitely has revealed to you. God bless you. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you have to unmute yourself. Um, I had muted you. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you, sweetheart. I, I appreciate it. Um, is is Naomi, is Naomi there? Naomi, if you are there, Daktari, you could say, you use the last minute that I was given. Naomi Duta, Naomi Dr. Naomi Dongo, are you there? Yeah, Naomi yeah. Duta could be different um, oh, it's, it's from different. Naomi okay. Dongo. Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, I, I would want to say that uh, that question which was asked is that uh, is the mentorship compulsory? I would say it is highly recommended. Without it, you may end up learning where you are not, not meant to learn. Um, let me just say something about, uh, something that my wife, <laughs> my wife, my wife knows about. You know, men, men sometimes we think we know a special direction. And many times we have gone into a place I have refused to ask. I say, I know. And I go around and round and round. My wife says, just stop, ask the people from around here. They will give you direction. One time we were in Bruburu, we went round and round and round in the estate. Eventually I had to eat humble pie to ask when I'd wasted a lot of time. So please take time and ask the guide, the wise man, the wise woman who has gone the way. They know the way. They have made, they, they have fought the freedom. Just ask them, how did you win this freedom? And get around and be what you're meant to be by God's mercy. Mentorship is so important that I cannot do without it myself. Thank you. Wow, well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And thank you, Reverend uh, Josephine uh, Guo for joining us. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm so grateful. Um, you are my friends and uh, we really appreciate. Um, um, I also appreciate um, my wife. I had uh, seen her on. Um, yes, she's still there. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, for joining us. Um, in the interest of time, it's already 8.30. Um, some of us also have to beat the curfew and, and get home because I'm not at home. But uh, allow me to introduce you to um, this team of four. I hope you can see that on your, on your screen. Myself, uh, Reverend John Wesley, Anne Kiambi, and uh, Dr. Naomi Dongo. Um, we have come together. Um, we want to inspire, empower, and mentor, IEM. And our aim is to mentor, and ins mentor, inspire, and empower young adults and young professionals to transform their spheres of influence. So this is what we want to do. Um, what Leverett John has uh, presented to you is, is, is just a small bit of what mentorship entails. But um, we would like to, uh, to go ahead and change a generation that they may be able to become agents of transform, transformation wherever they are. If you're on Facebook, um, you can search for inspire, empower, and mentor. And if you are a young professional, you are a young adult, you're below 40, or you are one who deals with uh, young professionals and young adults, this is also for you. We will, we will be there for you. So like our Facebook page, we also have a closed uh, Facebook group where you can join. It will ask you just a few questions. And if you answer them, then you will be admitted and something great is cooking. From there, we will start serving. So thank you very much. Uh, and I hope that you will be able uh, uh, to join us on that. And I will be sharing this on my Facebook page, as well as on my other uh, social media platforms. Otherwise, it's, it's a thank you to Leverett John Wesley. Thank you very much for having time. It's um, mid-morning where you are. And it's, that's, that's, that's a come on board and uh, be of help to all of us in here. We, we have learned a lot and we really thank God for the opportunity to have you. I won't say much. Um, uh, let me just see, I think I've seen like there's a chat here so that I don't miss out on anything that was, um, may have been said. Yeah, I don't see like there's something uh, uh, new that we need to look at. I uh, will ask Reverend uh, David Kangende. He is uh, here together with us. 
Reverend David Kangede will be a guest with us one of these days, not very long from now. In the next few webinars, I'll be inviting men and women to share their journeys, uh, the journeys they have walked. And, and, and maybe I'll still even request uh, Reverend John Wesley and Reverend Peterson to come on board, but we'll, we'll arrange that. Um, but Reverend, uh, Reverend David Kangede will also be joining us in one of the days. He just retired as the country director for Danish Refugee Council. And it would be good to hear what his career journey has been, as well as ministry. So, Reverend David Kangede, you will pray for us, but I uh, let people know that we will be having you one of these days. Kaidre, go ahead and pray for us. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Reverend Waroy. And once again, even as we pray, uh, just allow me to thank our very able uh, uh, speakers for today. Uh, they are a resource that is a blessing to us, and uh, we've gathered quite a lot. Uh, and my prayer is that God continues to make use of them, uh, even for our current generation. So thank you so much, our, uh, our presenters. May God bless you. Let's pray together. Our loving Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we would like to really appreciate you. And thank you so much, Lord, even for giving us an opportunity uh, to participate in this webinar. Uh, thank you, Lord, even for the insights that we are getting on mentorship from the people that you have prepared, Lord, and used in our generation, mighty God, to prepare us to be good mentors. Uh, my prayer tonight, Lord, is for every one of us that has been tuning in and learning from this. And we want to pray, God, just as your word says in the Bible, that this may not just be mere words that we are hearing, but these be teachings and they be uh, lessons, Lord, that we can apply in our own lives, O oh God, so that we are uh, of assistance to other generations, so that we can make a difference in the lives of other people, and mighty God, that we can be mentors, O oh King of glory. I want to thank you for all of them, O oh God, that have spoken to us. Uh, thank you for preparing them for this day, Jehovah, and even in the days ahead. And thank you, Lord, even for uh, the time they have taken, Jehovah, to uh, be a blessing to us, O oh God. Continue uplifting them, Lord, and even uh, addressing their every need day by day. We want to thank you for Reverend Waroi and uh, this ministry, Jehovah, of shining the light. Thank you, Father, because he has taken it upon himself, Lord. Uh, even to be the bridge through which we are linked with the resources like the ones you have brought to us all today. We want to thank you, Lord, for his ministry. We thank you for his church. We thank you for his career. And God, we want to pray that, Lord, even as he continues to organize these webinars, oh God, they will continue to make a difference in our lives and to transform our lives, oh God. We want to thank you. We want to bless you this evening for those of us who are in Kenya. Uh, we thank you for this morning for our, 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 our brother Wesley, who is in the U.S., and others that may have tuned from other uh, areas of the world, oh God. Uh, we just want to pray for your blessings upon each one of us, oh God. We thank you and we bless you. Uh, we honor you, Lord. We appreciate you. And we give all the glory and honor to you for what has happened today. And Lord, we do all this in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. We don't, I don't take it for granted. And from Shining Light um, Mentorship, let's continue revering the gold. God bless you and have a good night. Reverend John Wesley, have a productive day. It's already productive. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you Sad. very much. Thank yeah. you. Okay. See you next week. We'll let you know the timing and the day, but most probably the same Thursday at 7.30 p.m. God bless you and kwaheli. Asante.